One of the key elements of vehicle crash safety is ensuring the integrity of the patient compartment during a crash, allowing for a protected space. In model year 2017, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is expanding the requirement for roof crush to altered and modified vehicles under 10,000 pounds. This change will include most van-style ambulances. However, modular ambulances, which are more than 10,000 pounds, fall outside this regulatory requirement. To ensure modular-style ambulances are built to manage the impact load from a rollover event, ambulance manufacturers, in conjunction with government partners, have developed SAE J3057. In a companion effort, ambulance builders are also working to improve the subfloor strength so they can be confident the floor substructure has sufficient strength to manage the new higher loading needed to retain improved patient cot systems. Their work has resulted in the development of a new test described in SAE J3102 to evaluate floor strength for van and modular ambulances. This module provides you with the background information to explain how these tests were developed and how a successful test benefits you and your patient. SAE J3057 was developed to ensure a safe space for patient compartment occupants is maintained while still allowing the doors to be opened after a crash or rollover event. In the early days of ambulance testing, an ambulance patient compartment was tested in the same way as a school bus. One and a half times the weight of the vehicle was applied to the roof of the patient compartment, and while the roof was still under load, the door still had to be opened with no permanent deformation. In 2007, the ambulance manufacturers increased the load to two and a half times the weight of the vehicle to the roof and to the side of the modular body. While under load, the doors still have to be able to be opened. As the industry continued to mature, the partners realized that during an actual rollover, some damage would occur to the patient compartment. So the new test, SAE J3057, requires that the patient compartment experience an impact prior to the 2.5 load being applied. Because we can't roll every ambulance from every manufacturer, we conducted three different styles of rollover test and measured the accelerations and forces at impact. We used this measured data as the basis for the impact loading used in the first phase of the roof crush test described in SAE J3057. Using the data from these tests, we developed a two-phase strength assessment for the patient compartment. In the first phase, the vehicle is impacted with 28,000 pounds of force at the roof edge, just as would be seen if the vehicle rolled. The second phase simulates the vehicle rolling over onto its roof. To be conservative, a load that equals two and a half times the weight of the vehicle is applied to the roof. One way to do this is with a hydraulic press. To pass this test, roof crush is measured to ensure there's still a survivable space. After the roof crush, then the doors must be able to be opened so occupants can get out. If the builder is able to meet this requirement, the patient compartment passes the testing requirement for SAE J3057. As part of the research to improve worker and patient safety, testing was done on the patient cot, cot mount, and restraints. During this testing, loads were measured under the test floor so that ambulance builders have the information they need to better design the subfloor structure. To ensure all builders have a way to verify that their subfloor structure is strong enough to manage loads from the new cot and cot mount systems, SAE J3102 was developed. The SAE J3102 test method provides two different options for testing. An ambulance builder can either complete a dynamic test where an impact pulse is applied, or the builder can complete static testing. In a dynamic test, the builder can either use an actual cot with a test dummy, or could use a mass to represent the amount, cot, and patient weights. Regardless of the loading method, real cot or simulated weight, the goal of this test is to ensure that the mass remains attached to the vehicle, ensuring that the substructure has been able to manage and distribute the loading without failing. To provide builders with another way to pass this test, the team also created a static test option. If a builder wants to install one of the heavier cot systems, a load approaching 18,000 pounds needs to be applied to the floor substructure through the load input device. Regardless of the choice, static or dynamic, SAEJ3102 requires the builder to test in the front, side, and rear directions. 
The goal of our work is to make sure EMS workers are as safe on the job as they would be getting to the job in their own personal vehicle. One of the ways we've done that is by improving modular body strength and subfloor strength for both modular and van ambulances. When purchasing your next ambulance, we strongly suggest your ambulance purchase specification includes the requirements of SAE J3057 for modular body integrity and SAE J3102 for subfloor strength.